This is Coop and Cassius for IFL TV. Proudly Brings back some memories this boy, doesn't it? Proudly sponsored by Everlast. It's been a while since... Brings like, back some memories. It does. It's man and boy. This is what we used to do. Right here. Do you remember that one? You got me where you want me. Do you remember? Yeah, I remember that. That's, that, that's, that's probably a the most clip. iconic clip. Yeah. yeah. How are you, first of all? I'm very well, thank you. I mean, obviously delighted to be chauffeuring you around today. Which again is uh, feels like the old days. Also, you falling asleep. It took a while for that to happen, though, didn't it? Yeah, and you know the the customary Coogan mouth open, catching flies. That's good, mate. The sun is shining. We're off to Nottingham for the first leg of Lee Wood against Michael Conlon press conference. Of course, Belfast tomorrow as well. So feeling absolutely top of the world, to be honest with you. Let's talk about the double header for Wood and Conlon. Mm. Um, whose idea was it to kind of go to Belfast? Well, look, Tomorrow. when we were deciding the venue, there were three options. One was Madison Square Garden. Obviously, we planned to go there with Katie Taylor against Serrano soon after. Um, Belfast was, of course, in the running as well. And Nottingham. And, you know, Lee Wood's the champion. It's been a long time since we've done a major fight in Nottingham. Carl Froch against Butte was obviously the last one. I've wanted to do something there for a long time. So we went with Nottingham and I felt that we should um, we should do a press conference in Belfast because it's always a right laugh and the atmosphere is always brilliant. Um, so I think this is a really big fight. I mean, we've seen that from the announcement. We've seen that from the ticket sales, just from the fighters. I think Lee Woods ordered two and a half thousand tickets. Michael Conlon's ordered well over a thousand tickets. You know. Terry Harper, everyone else that's on the bill, Sandy Ryan, etc. We're going to do the the whole nine thousand for this fight, and I feel like it's a, a great fight, great start to the year. And why not do a cheeky little two city press conference to kick us off, Coop? First press conference of twenty twenty two. Yeah, about right time, there. mate. Yeah, yeah. Just trying to. You're not right. as nimble as you used to be because you used to just do that. Now you're like fidgeting all over the place. Hold on, let me just try and get you in. There we go. We know it's all going to be a bit all over the gaff this one. That's but anyway. always is, mate. All right, mate. All right, mate. So, uh, you announced a very good fight. A tough fight for uh, Terry Harper. I remember yeah. It's a different weight. Ever Hardy. It's, it's, a, it's the perfect fight. You know, I saw Michaela Myers' comments about, oh, she's been thrown under a bus and it's too early for her. Look. Terry Harper got beat by Baumgardner, a great performance, call it the brilliance of Baumgardner, call it the weight, call it the inactivity, the injury, whatever, it doesn't matter, it's done. So now we've got to move on, she's moved up to 135 pounds, you've got Heather Hardy who is a, you know, a legend of, of combat sports, women's combat sports, she's tough as they come, she's going to come to win, We're not, you know, it's not just about having easy fights and Terry Harper should be beating Heather Hardy and if she doesn't then there is a problem um, but fair play to Steffi Ball and Terry Harper because they've jumped straight back in the fight's been brilliantly received it's a great fight for the undercard of Wood Conlon and uh, yeah tremendous fight yeah I was quite impressed with that actually. you were weren't you you actually messaged me to I say you yeah. like that yeah I like that one mate thank you mate that because whenever I get that kind of respect and credibility from you I mean you know there's other people in the game, you know, whether it's Jim Lampley, whether it's Dan Raphael, whether it's, um, I don't know, Max Kellerman, you know, who, if they commented on a fight, you'd kind of appreciate that. But when you do it, it's different, you know. I mean, you are such a boxing aficionado that to get the credit and respect from, from you really makes me feel like I've made a great fight. And, and you know, when you sent me that message, it really made me feel unbelievable. I'm going to pick the bones out there and said that I'll take that. That's fine. That's all right. Yeah, don't take I was it. Being, yeah, I was being honest. No, you're being a prick, but that's <laughs> fine. That's no problem. Come on, son. All right, let's talk about another delayed purse bid. What the fuck's going on, Edward? Uh, nothing really. I mean, obviously, you've seen our, our objection to the split. There's a lot of negotiations going on behind the scenes. The purse bid is due for Friday. It's now Wednesday. We talk about obviously White against Fury. Will it take place? We'll have to see. Um, a lot of discussions going on behind the scenes. And yeah, 
that's where we're at. I know you're not going to, obviously, it just indicates that you guys are working on a potential deal. That's why it's the yeah, delay. There's a lot. There's a lot of reasons why the bid's been delayed. Um, I wouldn't say that the conversations are nearing a deal for White against Fury. But as you know, there's, you know, um, arbitrations and legal cases and, and, and appeals into various things. And that's probably the bigger reason for the delay. Is there a possibility of a further delay come Friday? Yes. There is? Yes. No. Oh, okay. Um, so this situation is obviously, is you're working alongside this situation regarding Joshua and Alexander Usyk. So are you kind of waiting for one to pan out? And Not really. No, I mean, look, everybody knows that uh, there is a desire from some people to try and make the Fury versus Usyk fight. Um, there's a lot of things that would need to take place for that fight to get the go ahead. Um, and that's not necessarily, the, the, well it's not the delay to the purse bid, um, but we're not looking to see if Fury White happens first to put a date together for Joshua against Usyk, no. Okay, so, are you saying that there's still a potential of a regional... I'm telling you, there's still des a desire from some people to try and get that fight together. Okay, and the likeliness of that? I think it's the like, you know, the, the favourite right now is Fury against White and AJ against Usyk. Anything can happen, you know, in these closing periods of time leading up to D-Day or Crunch Day or Purse Bid or whatever you want to call it, this is where the business happens. So expect the unexpected, but as I've said to you, my my gut feeling is that you'll see those two fights, but you, you never know what's going to happen over the next couple of days. Well, when you were talking the other day about March, right, I was thinking the March dates came from who? You, weren't they? No. 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 You've never mentioned March as a potential... For what fight? For White and Fury. No, the... The March 26th date is a date that came from Frank Warren and Bob Arum saying whatever happens... They want Tyson Fury to fight on that day. Yeah, whatever happens, okay. Fury is fighting on that day. So right. I, I just, you know, I'm not, I just don't feel, I don't feel that's possible really in, in any of the scenarios. Unless the person we goes ahead on Friday and they win it and they, they do the fight on March 26th. If we win the first bid, we wouldn't do the fight on March 26th. And I feel like if it's going to be a sizable fight, um, you know, could even be an international fight. It's just not a lot of time, in all honesty, to get that together. But you know, maybe, maybe they can do it. Why are you still talking about AJ Fury? What on that quote the other day? Yeah. When you do those shows, they pull out a quote from a question, but you don't actually show the context of the quote. Right. No context. Huh? So what I said was, they talked about AJ versus Fury, and I said people were still coming up to me on the street, going, when's when's the AJ fight? And I say, what, I want the rematch? And they go, no, no, the Fury fight. And it's like, well, he lost to Usyk, and he's gonna rematch him. Oh, right, okay, so is he not fighting Fury? And that's still the fight that people wanna see. So all I said was, Fury against AJ, whether they both lose another four times, will happen at some point. And that was it. It was a quote taken from that um, that, oh. that whole interview. But I don't expect you to watch interviews just to take the clickbait that comes with it. No, I just asked you. Like, why were you mentioning no, I understand. About it? That was it. It's fine. But um, no, I thought something could happen, and you know, you love talking about it anyway. I, I love know. talking. It's good to talk. Right. And uh, good for you that I like to talk. It is. It is good. You're very, you're very accessible, not just to me, but to kind of everyone. I'm an accessible guy. You are, aren't you? I don't like to be rude. Um, and I like to give people my time, if I can. We'll be going to Nottingham today. How many interviews will I do today? Minimum 15. Oh, and the rest. Don't mug me off, mate, like I'm not in demand. What? Uh, you were gonna do more than 15 uh, interviews? Yeah, easy. You, DAZN, BBC, ITV, TalkSport, 
uh, behind the gloves, boxing. So I mean, there's and then there's another ten YouTube channels that pop up out of nowhere, and I give them all time. Such a nice guy. Well done. Well done. Um, okay, so in regards to kind of the Joshua situation and the White Fury situation, nothing's really you can tell us anything concrete. We know apart from a delay in the past weeks, we've got uh, nothing really no. new to report on that. No. Okay. So Sorry. We know you speak to Joshua all the time. So what's I his? Spoke to him last night. Did you actually no. speak to him? Last actually, night? I did. Let me just say one thing about Anthony Joshua. Yesterday. I went and opened the new amateur boxing club in Brentwood. Brentwood, Brentwood Central, Central. Yeah, which yeah. is down at um, the Brentwood Centre, the International Centre, which has been revamped following its, its closure, actually. And I loved it. I loved it. I mean, I... You know, when you work in the boxing business, it's very easy to, to forget why you fell in love with the sport. And when you go down to an amateur boxing club and you see kids training, enjoying themselves, learning, and you see the good that boxing or sport is doing for, for that kid, I, I loved it. And there was one boy and he was punching the bag. And his dad said to me, you know, he loves AJ, he worships him. So I went over to the corner of the room and I FaceTimed AJ. He picked it up, the room was pitch black, he was asleep. He was resting in between sessions. And he said, all right, Ed, I said, oh shit, sorry mate, I said, I'm just down this amateur boxing club, I wanted to, a kid to see you. And he was like, no, 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 wait there. He got up, he turned the lights on, and he said, go. I took the phone over to this kid who was punching the bag, and I said to him, you all right, mate? He went, yeah, yeah. And I turned the phone around, and I've never seen a face like it, you know? So, shout out to Anthony Joshua. Shout out to what role models and stars can do to inspire the next generation. That kid, and by the way, I went around the whole club, and he said hello to every kid in there on the FaceTime. You do not realise the effect that that can have on that kid can change his life honestly change his life and it's very difficult for people like Anthony Joshua to just give their time all the time to, to that next generation but how good when they do because honestly that kid will go home he will never ever forget that night so anyway thank you Anthony Joshua and in other news I did speak to him last night obviously via that but not when you know there's there's nothing really to discuss at the moment <laughs> AJ's training you know, questions, and probably one of yours is, or oh, when's his new team getting announced? Who's the new trainer? There's nothing to report at the moment. When there is, it will come from him and 258. And when camp starts, I guess that will be made apparent because you'll see it. And um, camp is imminent. You know, he's, he's training every day, but proper camp will probably start at the beginning of February. Okay. Um, but are you saying April when you wanted him to I potentially think so, fight yeah. Yeah, is I still so. a realistic possibility? Yeah, because I think if he fights Usyk, then it's a stadium fight. <coughs> It'll probably be in London, and um, April April would be good. Could go into early May. I don't think there's. It's not like either Usyk or AJ are saying hurry up, give us the date. Of course they want to. They want to fight in the first half of the year, but. I think April, end of April, is realistic. Do you think that both these situations will be tied up before the end of the month? Yes, definitely. Yes. So you will know, kind of the 1st of Feb, what all these fighters are doing? Yes, but I, I can't tell you that it'll be announced or I'll know all the venues and everything, but I think, yeah, we, we will know a lot more by the end of the month. The end of the month is basically next weekend not this weekend next weekend I mean, I'm pretty confident in that okay. but then when we were negotiating AJ against Fury I did keep saying in the next two weeks and then obviously it went on for about six months or so I believed you mate well I said it from the heart it wasn't like I was just trying to wind people up I, that's how long I thought it would be resolved so when I tell you that you're asking me a question do I think 
that this will be resolved by the end of next week. Yes, I do. I believe you. Well, I, it might not be, but I'm just giving you my opinion. All right. And I'm a very positive guy. So I, I do believe it will be. Sometimes it doesn't work out like that. And a few messages a uh, couple of days ago. Who did? I did. About, uh, are you retiring from boxing? No, someone... <laughs> I know. I got, I got a dozen messages from people, quite a few people from the industry where someone put out a hoax tweet to say that Eddie Hearn was retiring from boxing promotion at the end of the year and people were going, mate, I've just seen this. Like, what? what? Why? What's going on? And it was just a parody account. It was Michael Benson. It's three ends. There's a Michael Benson account with three ends. And I think Benson's account's got two ends. And uh, every now and again it catches people out. I'm not retiring. Yeah, Twitter seems to catch a lot of people out with some stats and things, doesn't it? Sometimes. Not you. I'm I was going to say, that sounded like... No, 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 no not you, on. but I'm just saying in general, people kind of, yeah, don't really follow up on what's been tweeted. Yeah, great chat, mate. All right. Good, good question. Really going to excite the viewers, that little segment. I wasn't actually asking a question, I was just, like, mentioning. Um, okay. But so, you're an interviewer. Yeah, but sometimes I'll just say something right. and then you have to react to it. We're not. I've been doing it for 10 years. I've been doing it all the time. But then ultimately, you're not interviewing someone. You're just then making it about yourself and just saying, oh, I'm going to, let me talk now. I'm going to talk about what I think is topical. Not really. But it's like me going, that's a good fight, isn't it? I'm not actually asking a question. I'm making a statement. Then you go. You just ask me a question. That's a good fight, isn't it? That's a question. No, that's a good fight. You didn't say that, though, did you? Not. <laughs> that, that's a good fight. Well done, Ed. It's a good fight. But that is a little bit of a. It's I mean, really you know, question. I'm just, the way you say it, that's a good fight. Or that's a good fight. That's not a question. That's a good fight. That's not a question. That's a statement. Yeah, that's a good fight. It's kind of like it's a leading question, you know. Great chat, Ed. <laughs> really. <laughs> What's going on with uh, uh, Taylor Serrano? Uh, by the end of next week, I, I, I genuinely think by the end of next week you'll have an announcement for that fight. Do you reckon? Yeah. yeah. What, in uh, New York? What's the plan? Very close now. Um, coordinating everything with, with Jake Paul and um, Most Valuable Promotions. It's been good actually. Slick. Good to work with. Got a big desire to make history with this fight. And uh, yeah, closing closing everything out now as we talk. Potential date clash with uh, a potential fight with Shakur Stevenson yep. and Oscar Valdez. Yep. Um, I saw you made some comments on that as well. Yeah, I just feel that that you can't go through your schedule worrying about clashes with other events that haven't even been made yet or weren't even being discussed. To be fair, when we confirmed our date, so I what I said was is that. Valdez Shakur Stevenson is a great fight, and to the hardcore fight fans, I'm sure you know that that's a fight they love. But this is very something very different. This is for history. This is the biggest female fight of all time, one of the biggest fights of all time, with the biggest promoter of all time, with one of the biggest platform promoters and of all time, working together to create history at Madison Square Garden. So, it's very difficult to not have a, a, an event clash. And I don't know whether Shakur Stevenson or Valdez gets made for that date. And I'll tell you something now. If I was ESPN, I wouldn't want to go up against Taylor Serrano with, with me and Jake Paul behind that event. And the global media exposure and the interest and the eyeballs that is going to be on that fight. Because that's an iconic moment. Shakur's a brilliant fighter. Valdez is a good fight. This is an iconic moment for our sport. This is what we've been working towards since the moment Katie Taylor came through the door of my office. This is the moment we have been waiting for. So, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable with whatever it's up against because it is what it is. And you, you're not going to find a clear weekend. It doesn't work like that in boxing anymore. So, yeah. You try and accommodate when you can, can't you? Moving things around. If, it, if something's already set, yeah. yeah then, a good example, Lawrence Acoli, our big card at the O2, we're going Sunday night. For two reasons. One, I genuinely want to try boxing on a Sunday. And two, Josh Taylor's fighting the night before. So, 
that don't make sense when there's an event booked in but when you've been planning an event for months you've booked the best venue in the world and it's not really available that much you roll with it you know and actually I think it will get I think Jake Paul will get his teeth into it even more if he thinks he's up against another fight so you know we're going to be using his platform he's going to be pushing the fight that's why you know the, the fight is so big and that's why Serrano has so much value in this fight she's a great fighter and she has the Jake Paul platform as well so um, per Eddie Hearn this will be announced next week no I said it's very likely that that fight will be confirmed next week but there's still still work to do still work to do um, your thoughts on the pay-per-view price for Thurman and Barrios I mean they're just killing pay-per-view aren't they killing it I mean you had Javonta Davis I don't I don't know people are saying less than 50,000 buyers there's never been a number reported by anyone which is very strange um, and Charles Martin against Lewis Ortiz what 10,000 buyers now you have Keith Thurman against Barros for 75 US dollars or otherwise known as 55 English pounds okay if that fight does 20,000 buyers I'll be astonished that fight I don't think has sold a thousand tickets at the box office in Vegas Keith Thurman who is again great fighter he's just not a pay-per-view or box office draw especially with no big name opponent and Barros who is again great fighter you know got got beat by Tank in a good fight but this is you know this is I don't know I felt that you know it's been well documented about my thoughts on pay-per-view and where it's heading for certain fights and this is a great example of a fight that should never be on pay-per-view and actually will end up doing its absolute conquers. What do you think about Furman against Barros for 75 US dollars? I think it's very, very steep. The first time you've ever made a comment like that. Not normally really, you go, it is steep. Normally you go, oh, well, at the end of the day, it's up to the individual to decide whether they think that's value for money yeah but that's so what you say it is no, but it is but that's true and my opinion but is that's actually true it's up to them if it they is want to but, pay my, for it, but, don't pay yeah, but for normally it, but you don't give an opinion right yeah, but ain't so it's my nice job, to see it you ain't my job it's to give nice an to see you grow some cojones for a little while Edward it's not my job to give an opinion my job well, is to ask you your on. opinion it's not your job to give an opinion let's just rewind the interview 10 minutes well that's a good fight isn't it yeah yeah don't mind giving your opinion on that, do you? Yeah, but that's not yeah, really an opinion. That's just like that's, that's just not a, really a, like a comment because I'm in the car well, with you, and I feel opinion. awkward if I don't pick up one of your fights. You said all that in one breath. You just joked him. Oh, I hope it does get announced. What a lovely week. day! It is, isn't it? Mm. Um. Okay, so is your stable all happy? Stable's very happy. Why wouldn't you be? I mean, you can box anywhere in the world for a load of money you can stay active there's a lot of bluff merchants in this game and if you want to put your career in the hands of a bluff merchant they're more for you we're in a great place it's so exciting to be able to sit down with fighters and say where do you want to box do you want to box San Diego on an iconic Estrada Chocolatito card do you want to, do you want to box at MSG on the iconic Taylor Serrano card do you want to box in Nottingham in front of 10,000 for Wood Condon? Do you want to fight at Ali Pali in front of 7,000 for Jacobs Ryder? Or do you fancy going to Leeds for Kiko against Warrington in front of 9,000? Or coming up, do you want to fight on the Joshua Rusic card or the Conor Ben card? Or I mean, do you want to go to Italy? Italy's nice. Have you been to Spain? Why don't you go and box in Madrid? Beautiful. Or do you want to go and box in the home of boxing in Mexico? What about a little trip to Guadalajara? Or perhaps you want to fight on the Canelo Alvarez undercard? I mean, Okay, hold on, hold on. Which fighter did you fucking say this to? I'm not, I'm just saying. Oh, in general. That's what we have the ability to do. Saying. because it's put What fighter had the option of every single yeah, card? A lot of them. A lot of fighters get the option. Do not? Yeah. Do you not tell them they're fighting on this card? Yeah, but, you know, it depends on the fighter. 
but young fighters, we want to give that experience to fight all over the world. That's what builds a fighter, that's what grows a fighter, that's what develops a fighter. Not doing the same thing all the time, because you know what? When you land that shot, sometimes it doesn't come just in, in your hometown. You've got to go, you've got to experience different commissions, you've got to experience the travel, you know, the, the, the time differences, the production, the, everything is different when you fight abroad. And it's so, so it gives fighters so much grounding and experience to, to accomplish that. Fighting early, fighting late, fighting as a swing bout. All of this is experience that when you get that moment in life and in boxing and in sport, that moment sometimes only presents itself once. And if you're not ready, you lose that moment, you lose that opportunity. What we're doing is making sure that we give fighters the opportunity to be great. And I'm not interested in fighters that don't want to be great. I'm not interested in fighters that don't want to be global stars, that don't want to win world championships and fight all over the world, in the biggest venues in the world, the most iconic stadiums everywhere around the world. I want you to dream big with us, just like this lorry in front. What a liberty. Yeah, what is he doing? Yeah. Um, so there you go. So yeah, things are great. Stable's great, we're always here. Anyone ever has any concerns? We're a phone call away. And um, I, my mind is very, very focused on all our stable. Not just Anthony Joshua, Canelo Alvarez and Katie Taylor and Dillian White. My, my mind is focused on all of our talent, all of them. Because they're all gems, you know, they're all, some of them are shining bright now, some of them are rough diamonds, they need a polish. But you know they're, they're all gonna. Get, I say to a fighter when they when you sign with us, I promise you, you will have every opportunity to achieve your dreams, create a legacy, and change your life. You will be given everything that is needed. No bullshit, no lies. We will give you the golden path to go and make it. Now the rest is down to you. I like that. It's true, because in sport, sometimes you can fuck your whole career by building the wrong team and by listening to people that don't tell the truth or don't have a track record or anything. But you need to be with a team of people that will give you the opportunity to achieve your dreams. And with us, one million percent, it's not even, there's no doubt, you will get the opportunity to be great. Now, can you be great? Can you be great? That's down to you. But there are many great fighters that never got the opportunity to be great. And you cannot retire from this sport looking back with regrets, thinking, oh fuck, I can't believe it. I had all the ability in the world and I didn't get the opportunity. Well, let me tell you something now. Not with Metro. Not on my watch. Okay, what is the situation regarding Cam Bolsus and Devon Hay? So, just negotiations, really. Um, had a chat with Lou DiBella earlier this week. We're ready. You know, we're ready to make that fight. Um, wow. Australia. Right. Australia, we've had interest from the Middle East. But basically, George Cambosis wants to do a stadium fight in Australia. So so he should. Let's do it. You know, we've got the zone ready to, to support that event. George Cambosis is a big draw in Australia, ready to fill a stadium over there, I'm sure. Lou Bella can get government support for that fight as well. Um, big, big uh, rights fee or pay-per-view revenue, whatever way they're going to go with it in Australia. Ready. Ready to make that fight. It's the fight for Undisputed. You know, you saw Dan Raphael this morning. George Cambosis is not Undisputed. Fact. Fact. I love George Cambosis. I love his old man. Great guys. Not Undisputed. Fact. Only one way to be undisputed. Fight Devin Haney. Yeah, well... I feel like this is a good interview. Well, it is a good interview. Um, yeah, facts are facts, Edward. I think um, yeah. regardless of who we regard as the best in the weight, etc., there is a belt missing it's nothing from... to do with who's the best, you know. Well, it's all about who's the best. Oh, well, yeah. Though. No, but this is not about who's the best. This is about... The, I'm talking about the argument of undisputed. Right. That's not, you know, it's just fact, really. And by the way... Tiafimo Lopez should have been undisputed. And therefore, George Cambosas should have been undisputed. 
fact, he's not. Okay. Um, Edward, I, w- I wanted to talk to you about um, Johnny Fisher. Yes. Rumour has it he sold near, near on 2,000 tickets. The most unbelievable thing I've ever seen. And you know when I said about going to the Brentwood Amateur Boxing Club um, the other night, being around someone at that stage in our career, someone local as well, I can't lie, you know, that is, that's a big attraction to me. Um, that, it really motivates me. You know, to see what Johnny's doing, the work that he's putting in, such a well-rounded and grounded young man who knows he's got a long way to go, but he's completely humble. You know, he's he's done a deal now with an extension for our contract and obviously commission and stuff like that that quite frankly has and will change his life, even at this stage in his career. And it's just, you know, you, you've got some massive ticket sellers, Josh Warrington, um, Lewis Ritson, Carl Frampton, you know, all the but they were selling big tickets when they were fighting for world titles or eliminators. This is a six round fight. This is the biggest ticket seller I've ever seen in this country at this stage in his career. Do you understand? When you're selling selling tickets for six rounders, if you do two or 300 tickets, it's massive. You're talking about a young man who has sold 2,000 tickets. 2,000 tickets from his front room. Shout out, big Johnny Fisher. So this is this is just a once in a lifetime moment that something like this happens. And I wanna say to all the people that are supporting Johnny Fisher, to all the people that are buying tickets and supporting him, you've changed his life. Now, you, you've changed it now. Not oh, if he goes on and wins a world title. Because, one, you've enabled him to just get an amazing deal that, you know, someone after four fights, you know, they just, they wouldn't be in that position. He's in that position. Yes, he's a good fighter. He's got bundles of ability. He's raw, but he's exciting. But what those people that are supporting him have done is going to be providing him with opportunities that someone at this stage in their career could only dream of. So well done to everybody that's supporting him. And well done to Johnny Fisher to remain in extremely humble, hard working, and that's why he's got the support that he does, because they're good people. I also want to throw on the end of that, well done and thank you to the coaches and the volunteers at amateur boxing clubs. Because without them, those clubs wouldn't exist. You know they don't get paid. It's not, you know, this is, you talk about volunteer work. And those people are, you know, they're heroes of boxing as well. So, yeah, Johnny Fisher, I mean, look, we've done, we we hold, I think it holds just under 7,000 at Ali Pally. Going to be a total sellout. Going to be a brilliant night of boxing. And I'll tell you something now, the atmosphere for Johnny Fisher that night will be something you will never forget. Who are you going to stick him in with? He's fighting uh, a Spaniard, which will be announced, like, literally in the next 24 hours. The guy beat. Uh, the guy he, bo- he beat last time. It's a good step up for him. Durable, big lump, and you know, it's, uh, it's going to be a good fight. Perfect fight for him. Five fights in, you know. A little mention for Jordan Reynolds as well on that card. Who's done Jordan a few Reynolds? Um, you no, know, Jordan Reynolds is a hustler and a good fighter. He's been on at me for a long time to try and get on one of our shows. Um, the kid's got something about him in and out of the ring. Um, he sold 400 tickets, huge ticket seller as well. I mean, normally that would be, you know, incredible, and it is still. But obviously, with Johnny, it's a little bit overshadowed. But Jordan Reynolds will fight on that card. Very hardworking young man with a big personality. Very exciting to watch as well, and a lot of support as well. So looking forward to having um, Jordan Reynolds um, down there. He bo- he boxes out of. Um, I box with uh, Al Smith and Sky Nicholson is down there as well and Keevan Agiarko is down there as well they've got a great stable shout out to Eddie Lamb who I think is one of 
the most underrated trainers in the UK right now. Um, and Al Smith doing a great job as well. And, and Jordan Reynolds, good chance for him and hopefully the first of many for him on a match room show. Ellie Scottney will fight for her first good, title. Good fight, yeah. She's fighting Horgelina Guani, who is a former um, super flyweight world champion. She had a really good fight with Rachel Ball and um, Galani was on three days notice, I think. So that's a big step up for um, Ellie Scottney on that card. Felix Cash's opponent will be announced this week as well. Of course, Johnny Fisher, Cyrus Patterson uh, on that card. Um, Jordan Reynolds, uh, Hopi Price. Uh, I probably missed one or two out as well. Um, yeah. Just going back to uh, the Warrington Martinez card mm -hmm. from the 26th of March. Um, you mentioned in our last interview that Ebony Bridges possibly may be fighting for a world title on that card. Any progress on that? Yeah, we've uh, we've completed the uh, discussions with Ebony's next fight. There will be a press conference, I think, next week in Leeds. Um, to announce the, the card for that fight as well and, and on sale uh, dates will, which will be next week I believe as well and yeah it's going to be a big fight for Ebony Bridges and uh, you know fair play to her she had the opportunity to have you know an easier fight or a very 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 tough fight and she opted for the latter it's going to be a great fight ok nicely worded I kind of answer my question without actually answering it well, sometimes I actually haven't got... Is she fired for a fucking world title, mate? You'll find out next week, you chump. <laughs> right, when we did our last interview, moments after um, the fight with Liam Smith and uh, Jesse Vargas had to be put on hold due to Vargas testing positive for uh, COVID. Yeah. So what is the update regarding that? When is that going to be rescheduled? The update for? is we're waiting for Jesse Vargas, really, to just confirm when he's going to be able to go back to the gym. So at first I hoped that that fight would be rescheduled for the end of Feb, it won't be. Uh, we're looking now at probably mid to the end of March um, and just really waiting to, you know, I don't want to announce a date and then that gets cancelled. So a bit frustrating for Liam, but obviously both guys are committed to the fight and there'll be a fight date for that shortly. Um, February the 5th still goes ahead. Yes, I mean, look, it's difficult because Rung Visaya Quadras for the world title is a, is a really big fight. And obviously, from a design schedule point of view as well, we want to give you great shows, we want to give you great fights. So you know, there was a feeling to maybe postpone the show, but also at the same time, there was a feeling um, to go ahead with, with a brilliant fight on February the 5th in Phoenix. So that fight, funnily enough, you know, I made a fight between Jamie Mitchell who beat Shannon Courtney and Carly, Carly Skelly, Skelly from yeah. Liverpool for the world title. But I made that because obviously Liam Smith was on. Um, but that fight for the world title, Jamie Mitchell against Carly Skelly goes ahead as well on Feb 5th. Great, massive opportunity for Carly Skelly. Um, Ray Ford's in a brilliant fight that night against Vasquez. Um, Khalil Co. Um, Mark, no, Mark Castro's March 5th. Um, uh, Jesse Bam Rodriguez um, closing in on a world title fight on that card as well and again I'm missing one more out I think getting a bit old Coop to be honest with you so yeah Feb 5th goes ahead Phoenix brilliant fight city and Rungusai Quadras will be an absolute war come on to your old mate now Aaron Aponte on that card as well. So, on, yeah, so. I still remember it, didn't you? Um, Canelo. Canelo. Yeah. Um, this quote, I don't know where it right. came from. The one about the boxing purist and not going to like his next opponent, mm. or similar to those. Where did that actually come from? I think it was from a guy called Shav Chava, who is a, a very respected journalist in Mexico. Um, I can't give you any information on that because I, of the fights that I'm talking to Canelo about, you, you fight fans will be very happy with. I guess it's some kind of, whether it's an exhibition or you know a crossover fight or something, I don't know. But um, yeah, no, 
the, the fights that I'm focused on for him. Can you tell us at least what weight he's going to fight at? I think he's, he's wide open, to be honest with you. You know, obviously he's undisputed at 168. I like to see him move up to 175 to try and become undisputed there. Um, there's the cruiserweight fights. So, you know. Do you know if he, if he starts on a pathway on to claiming all like the light heavyweight belts, for example, so what happens with his super middleweight titles? Does he have to, or is he obliged no, to vacate them? Generally, you'd be allowed to challenge for a title in another weight class, but then after that, under the rules from the governing body, you will have X amount of time to decide which one you're going to keep. Do you know what I mean? So, if he made the move to 175 and won a belt, he would really have to decide, probably within the next 14, maybe 28 days via an extension, to decide whether he's going to vacate his belts at 68 or focus at, at uh, sorry, uh, and move to 175 or remain at 168. But I kind of feel like he's done it, hasn't he? You know, he's become undisputed. So, and when you become undisputed, generally some of the belts, you know, become fragmented. Are you talking to him about Charlo? No. No? So that's not no, in the Charlo's boat. not my fight. I mean, no, that'll no, be No, are you pitch. talking to him? I'm, you know, for me, I have to pitch to Canelo fights that I can promote. So with my fighters, or fighters that I work with, or fighters that I know yeah. I can deliver. But have you had discussions about with him about that Charlo fight, no. even though you're not? No. 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 Me, me, me. What are you talking about? Well, that's a great fight, the Charlo fight, isn't it? Like if that was the best fight for him. Me, me, me. Yeah. What's me? What's me? Got I just to wondered if you'd have. Sort of comments that. I just wondered if you'd have. No, then when I push you on it, your bum fell out and you went, oh, that's no, a great fight, isn't it? What, 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 me? What are you me? talking about? What's what? a great fight? Charlo fight. Well, you, you know, you said fight. it was a great fight. Yeah, I think that's a good fight. But why did you go, me, 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 me? No, this is the way you went. I asked you if you'd had a conversation with him about it. Not as in trying to make it better, has he spoken to you about Charlo? And you're like, no, I don't want to talk about that because it ain't my fight, that kind of attitude. I can't deliver the Charlo fight. So why are you having a dig saying me, 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 me? Edward, I'm And then when you said it, your bum fell out. Not really. That's a very pretty view I do. I'll it? sling you in that in a minute. Come on, sir. Um, okay, so lots going on. Lots going on. Um, and also, my BBC podcast, No Passion, No Point, kicks off today. Brilliant! No, no, not this brilliant episode. Adam Peaty, Olympic world, Olympic champion, world champion, record-breaking swimmer, mate. If you need some 2022 motivation, check out No Passion, No Point. Now available on BBC Sounds, BBC Five Live, and across the BBC platforms. Like, listen, and subscribe. Um, what? Wow! This guy, he's driven like a mofo. And yesterday I recorded another episode with H, the rapper. Spell H to people. A I T C H. 22 year old from, from Manchester, absolutely smashing it at the moment. Real nice kid, very grounded. Um, Did you have lots in common? Yeah, I, I mean, I didn't want to spit a few bars on the Zoom, but we chatted last night and um, you know, he was just listening to some of my stuff. He rated it actually. Um, so we'll see where that goes. But on a serious note, he can fight actually. I've seen him on the pads, so I was talking to him about a potential fight with another rapper. Who? He didn't say. Oh. But... Um, okay. Um, are you excited for Khan and Brook? Yeah, I mean, I've watched various bits and pieces. As a fan, my thoughts are that Kel Brook is training like an absolute beast and Amir Khan I'd say isn't but I think Kel is a huge favourite in the fight huge favourite in the fight and again I sometimes I say things and I think Amir might, might feel that I'm having a dig I'm not having a dig I'm just saying honestly as a fan I don't think Amir Khan is up for this fight I've heard his interview was it with Umar or something and he basically said that if the fight falls through, I, you know, I wouldn't be that bothered anyway. Whereas Kel, he's looked really motivated for this fight, so I think um, I think Kel Brook wins the fight. 
Um, it's weird, isn't it? I always associate that fight with Viv, and you've got. Oh, that's all right, mate. It's life. Um, that's life. I'm pleased. I'm genuinely pleased. Is, I'm so listen looking with with it. Kel, who I was very close with for a very long time. Um. I'm genuinely delighted that he's making a lot of money for this fight. He's made a lot of money in his career, but this is the fight that, you know, it's the fight that he's secure anyway, but this is the fight that really gives him a wonderful life. And I want everybody to have a wonderful life, doesn't matter who you are. Whether you like me, hate me, I wish you a wonderful life. And this, um, this, fight will give him a wonderful life and, and he seems very motivated when Kel Brook is training and he's training hard that's when he's happy so I always want to see Kel Brook happy and you know I'm glad he got the fight what's up pinning with Alan Babbage Alan Babbage will return probably March time he fought last time probably shouldn't have fought really he had Covid well not at the time but he was coming through Covid recovery and it's a bit of a flat performance but I've reached out to um, Yvonne Michel to make the Oscar Rivas fight him and his team would like to go straight into the world title fight at Bridge Away. very yeah. tough fight um, so yeah we'll see if that can be delivered ok um, Fabio Wardley will feature on Lawrence Akoli card but we'll announce the Lawrence Akoli card in full next week 02 27th of February Sunday I see uh, Marius Breedis is continuing his pursuit don't, don't get me started on that he had a couple of words for you didn't he I just think it's embarrassing do you think it's embarrassing grow a pair and just be honest why are you again like, because you I feel I'm, like you grill me right all your interviews, I watch your interviews, your interviews, oh, Umar's interviews. You've done all this the other day, it's true, mate. Though. You've done this but all this when shit I the other ask day. You, I feel like, if you, if you honestly but don't I, think that, that it's embarrassing what Maris Brady is. Maris Brady is a pound for pound top fighter. He's calling out Jake Paul every day. He's getting tattoos of Jake Paul. He's. Oh. Yeah, I mean, it's not for everyone. Fucking right, it ain't for me. And by the way, I like Jake Paul, I think he's a bit... But I, it's frustrating because I want to make the Lawrence Akoli fight. And I, I don't know... I don't know what's going on. It's nice around here, isn't it? Very nice. What's the situation regarding um, Philip Hergovich? Now, is Yoka officially accepted or...? He's accepted. There is some issues around, apparently, him having an agreement in place. With Bacoli? Yes. So we'll have to see how that plays out. Um, but... He's accepted the fight, and hopefully uh, we can get that made. Great fight. Um, are you signing any of the Olympians? Yeah, we signed Chev Clark last Chef week. Yet. Yeah, um, signed another a number of Olympians from outside GB as well. I would say we will sign one or two more um, over the next. Two weeks. Why has it been quite slow with the site? Not just you, but just in general of them. Uh, I think people have just taken their time. I don't agree with it, really. I think some people have missed the boat. Um, and now the strategy's changed a little bit of how I'm presenting some of my thoughts to these fighters because, you know, debuting in March, April, May and sort of doing seven or eight, six rounders, I'm not so sure. The world moves fast now. Um, but you know, there's so many tremendous fighters come through that GB system, and you know, it's just, to be honest with you, it's only a case of putting a value in in, a, in in all honesty on the fighter. And these guys at the moment, I've said to a lot of them, you've had it off, you know, because of the competitive in the competitiveness in the market, they're getting deals that they would never have dreamed of two or three years ago. But as a business, we have to decide who's worth what. And, you know, that's that's really what it comes down to. Hmm. We don't need, of course, we want we want top young talent coming through, but it's not like, you know, we need these fighters. If there's a fighter we truly believe in, we'll do everything we can to sign them. But 
at the same time. It's not like we're building a business or a stable where we will overpay by four times to get this fire. Okay. A um, couple more questions before. Uh, it's been a nice chat. Are we not here yet? How long? How far? No, I didn't realise we're so far away. How far? 34 minutes. Maybe you take some room. I think I've actually gone the wrong way. So, thanks for that. Why? Well, you were distracted by talking. Mm. Um, what do you think Wild will do? That's a random question. I, know, I have absolutely no idea. Popped in my head. No idea. I'm not really interested in talking about it. Why are we so late? When we left, it said we got there at 12, and now it says 12.35. Anyway. Um, you, don't want to, you don't want to make comments. Oh, really? I don't. That's not my business, is it? You just want me he's to say your, something. He's been your business for the last he's five years, business. and I've now it's not fight. your business. No, it's not, is it? It's because it's my business if he might be in a fight with one of our fighters. Ed, you've he's spoken not. about Wilder regardless of what situation he's been but now oh, okay. it's not your business what do no, I think he's going to do I think he might fight again and he might retire there you go okay okay um, what did you think about Bob Aaron mentioning Robert Hellenius and Manuel Char as potential opponents for Tyson Fury if the white fight wasn't to materialise next it's the, I mean they've got to find someone and they've got to find someone as cheap as possible Okay. I mean, Dillian White fought Robert Hellenius about five years ago when he was in his prime. Beat him to a pulp every second, every round. Derek Chisora also fought Robert Hellenius about, what, six years ago? Beat him. Easy. Got robbed of a decision. Next question. Okay. Um, Chisora is obviously publicly backing Joshua to beat Tyson Fury. Mm -hmm. You see that little exchange the other day? Mm, I agree with you. Oops. I just think styles make fights, mate. I think AJ beats Fury, I always have. But Fury's proved me wrong many times. He's delivering. And uh, as I said, I'm very confident you'll see that fight. Before what? Before both fighters end their career. Okay. Yeah. Do we get excited about that what, comment? What are you doing now? <laughs> no, what are you just, doing? You just, I'm thinking, you're like, no, but I'm if just I thinking, can just like, string it out for another two minutes, I'll get a little bit more YouTube revenue. Not really, no, it doesn't work like that. Doesn't it? No, I'm just very like, relaxed, comfortable, nice scenery, like you said, the weather's out. It's pretty hot. The weather's man. out. The weather's out. <laughs> the sun's there out. There it is. It's out. Oh, mate. Edward, listen, appreciate your time. You I appreciate really you. And I appreciate your appreciation. And I appreciate everybody out there that continues to support boxing, matchroom, zone. Get ready for a massive year. Sorry it's been a bit all over the shop today. Oh, well, way. you are a bit all over the shop. I know, but it's like I've held this camera for Raw, like 50 it? minutes. Yeah, this Raw. is like what I used to do. Yeah. Yeah. Edward, thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you in Nottingham. Look forward to it.